Let's uh, let's change gears for a minute and talk about income inequality. Yeah. Your view is that as long as the condition of the working class is improving, we shouldn't care so much about income inequality. E yes. Equality is not a coherent ethical program. What? We're all to be the same height. <laughs> We're all to be the same weight. We're all to be the same IQ. If you, you're smarter than me, as I think you are, we're to, we're to pound nails into your head to make you stupider so that you'll be equal to me. There are people who would like to do that. I know. I'm sure, well, I don't know. I'm, I'm surprised <laughs> to hear that. But, but so e equality is a silly program. It's not, it's not, it doesn't have any ethical sense to it. Whereas raising up the poorest in our society, which should be the conservative and libertarian goal, um, that works. That's something that you can express in public policy and can make work. Um, uh, it doesn't involve foolish things like increasing the mi minimum wage to $15 an hour. It involves freeing up the economy. And so that's where it came from. It came from this, uh, this, this amazing modern enrichment from an average in the world of, in modern terms, $3 a day consumed and, and earned to, in say, the United States now, $130 a day. That's the magnitude we're talking about. A factor of 30, a factor of 100 in some cases. That's what we need to explain, and that's not to be explained by capital or institutions or trade unions or government. It's explained by human ingenuity unleashed. Are you concerned at all if the gap between the rich and the poor gets large enough, even if the material conditions of the working class are improving, that that in some way makes the working class distrustful of the system, less apt to take risks? The, the problem is that we mustn't encourage envy because envy is insatiable. Shakespeare's famous sonnet on this, when, when I, uh, he says, in effect, when I think of how much brighter this man is or how his face is more handsome than mine, uh, that, that, that sonnet embodies envy as a, as, a, as, 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 as a nasty and stupid way of going about life. So we've got we've to gotta work against envy. But here's an important economic fact. Real equality of real comfort has increased in the last 40 years and certainly in the last 100. If you focus on wealth, monetary wealth or especially, equality has moved up and down. And in three countries, Thomas Piketty found that inequality has increased in the last 30 years. And those were Britain, the United States, and Canada. Not his own country of France and most of the other countries he studied. It didn't increase, contrary to what people think he said. He's, he's worried about the future. He says, oh, it's going to get worse. It's going to get worse. The sky is going to fall, not that it already has fallen. So even if you study wealth, you, you find that it's not in all countries. It's inequality. Inequality has increased. But the equality of real comfort, of proper or helpful medical care, of having a roof over your head, of having enough to eat, of having adequate schools. These have gotten better in the last 30 years, not worse. This is true in Britain, it's true in the United States, it's true in these countries where the wealth inequality um, may have increased. So I, I think it's grossly over, it's, it's ethically incoherent, it's, it encourages envy, and in, in factual terms, it's overblown.